I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. There had been tension between them in the past that would lead to a fatal shooting in Wickham Avenue and Cottage Street in Middletown back on February 6, 2012. Today, 69-year-old Richard Brown pleaded guilty to a first-degree manslaughter charge for gunning down his neighbor, 54-year-old Arthur Twyman. Brown had told authorities that he had been uh, trying to stop Twyman's dog from killing him, but later admitted that he intended to seriously harm Twyman. Brown fired eight rounds from his rifle, hitting Twyman four times. Authorities say Twyman's past, he was a registered sex offender and convicted rapist, were not factors in his shooting death. When he's sentenced in October, Brown will get a 15-year prison sentence. A Newburgh man died last night after the dump truck he was driving collided with a car on Route 94 in Warwick. 71-year-old Frank DiMarino was pronounced dead at the scene after being ejected from his vehicle with a DiMarino trucks and topsoil of tuxedo. According to Warwick Police, DiMarino's truck crashed into a car that was turning from Route 94 onto Weiweyanda Road. The driver of the car, 24-year-old Christine Sutton of Goshen, was not seriously hurt. That section of Route 94 was shut down for several hours in both directions Monday night. A group of about 20 protesters stood in front of Congressman Chris Gibson's office in Hyde Park Monday afternoon. And they were there to send a message. They want Gibson to support comprehensive immigration reform. Protest was sponsored by a group called Organizing for Action, which is opposed to the issue-by-issue -issue approach the House of Representatives is currently taking in the ongoing national debate on reforming the federal immigration system. Protesters want House members, including Gibson, to uh, pass the bill approved in the Senate that increases border security, remakes rules for legal immigration, and offers eventual citizenship to the estimated 11 million immigrants currently in the U.S. illegally. Protesters were expected to make a presence this evening as well during a Gibson fundraiser in Liberty that uh, will feature House Speaker John Boehner. Police in the city of Kingston and the town of Ulster are hoping you might be able to uh, help them identify a young man and woman who've been passing phony $100 bills. Police say the bogus bills are of fairly good quality, but uh, can be detected by anyone paying close attention to the quality of the paper and the ink. Suspects use the phony bills to make a small purchase, then leave the store with the item they purchased, along with a large amount of legitimate currency that they receive in change. Now, if you think you know either of the suspects, contact the Kingston Police Department at 331-1671. All calls will be kept confidential. Opening statements are now expected to begin Monday in Sullivan County Court in the murder trial of Paul Novak. The man accused of strangling his estranged wife, Catherine, in December of 2008, then burning down their town of Tustin home in an attempt to cover up the crime and collect $800,000 in insurance money. County Court Judge Frank Labuda ruled that jury selection can proceed this week, despite objections from District Attorney Jim Farrell that uh, pretrial publicity, specifically a jailhouse interview with Novak that appeared Sunday in the Times-Herald Record, would be a roadblock to the selection of an impartial jury. An alleged co-conspirator, Scott Sherwood, was allowed to plead guilty last month to the lesser charge of conspiracy after agreeing to testify against Novak in the upcoming trial. Jim Sweeney says it'll put Middletown on the road to Detroit. The attorney for the Middletown Landlords Association was among those voicing criticism during a city hall hearing last night on a proposed law that would phase out more than 100 multifamily buildings in the city. Sweeney said the law would displace many lower income families by increasing the number of vacant properties. The law would uh, make non-owner occupied multifamily buildings illegal in most residential areas by 2016, though some uh, could get a five-year extension or a waiver. More than 500 apartments are in the affected buildings. The law, if approved, would impact multifamily homes in most of the city's residential areas, but would allow two-family homes. And it's a new role for an old school. Work is continuing this summer to convert the former Milton Elementary School building into the new Marlboro School District office. Both the Milton and Middle Hope Elementary Schools were financial casualties this spring, with district officials deciding to close both buildings and shift their students into Marlboro Elementary when classes resume this fall. 
Both Milton and Middle Hope uh, were closed and 60 full-time employees laid off, due in large part to financial shortfalls created from the long-standing dispute over the assessments of the two Dynegy power plants located within the Marlboro District. Clouds will dominate our weather for the next couple of days. Wednesday will be cloudy and a bit more humid, with periods of rain expected to move in by late in the day. The highs will be in the upper 70s to around 80 degrees. Thursday will be cloudy with showers likely. Temperatures will top out in the lower 80s. Get your day off to a good start with the news and information you'll find in the Times-Herald Record. And keep tabs on breaking news throughout the day right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.